Now that we can draw Lewis structures for molecules, we can start to think about how those Lewis structures tell us something about the shapes of the molecules. When we draw a Lewis structure, we aren't trying to represent the shape of the molecule, but it turns out that where the electrons are in the molecule will determine the shape of the molecule. So I have pictured here a few molecules, water, phosphorus pentafluoride, and um, ethene, or C2H4. These molecules all have very distinct shapes, and that's because of where the electrons are in those molecules. To predict the shapes of the molecules, we're going to start by drawing their Lewis structures. So for water, we know that um, hydrogen has to be the outside atoms because it can only take two electrons in its valence shell. So we would draw a Lewis structure that looks like this. I've already drawn it bent because I know that it's bent based on the picture that I showed you before. Notice that the oxygen atom has two lone pairs in order to um, have all the electrons needed in that molecule. We can write the Lewis structure for phosphorus pentafluoride, knowing that phosphorus is the least electronegative atom and that our fluorides are going to be connected to that phosphorus atom, and I need five of them. And if I count the number of electrons, I'll see that I need uh, three lone pairs on each of the fluorines. And that's my Lewis structure for phosphorus pentafluoride. C2H4 has two carbon atoms. They're both going to be sort of central atoms, so I would start by connecting those and then distribute the hydrogens around those carbons in a um, symmetric fashion. And then um, if I count the number of electrons, I've got four valence electrons for each carbon, so that's eight, plus four more from one from each hydrogen, so that's 12. So far I have two, four, six, eight, ten. so I need two more electrons, so I need a pair of electrons. I would put those on the central carbon atom, but um, I can only put the pair on one central carbon atom. So we might imagine putting um, a pair of electrons here, but if I do that, I can see that this carbon atom doesn't get its octet. So I'm going to need to move these two electrons into the center um, in order to make a double bond. So when I redraw that structure, I end up with um, the two carbon atoms connected by a double bond and the hydrogens around those carbon atoms for C2H4. The next step in predicting the shape of a molecule is to um, consider where those electrons are in the molecule. And the principle that we use is that electron pairs try to get as far away from each other as possible because they're all negatively charged, and so they will try to get away from each other. So if we think about how we could arrange four pairs of electrons, remember that a bond is a pair of electrons, so four pairs of electrons, and get them as far away from each other as possible, we would want the largest angle between each of those four electrons. As it turns out, the best way to do that is to put these electron pairs in the form of a tetrahedron. This is what a tetrahedron looks like. It has four sides that are triangles. So when I think about this molecule, the oxygen goes in the center of that tetrahedron, and then I have a lone pair here and a lone pair here and a hydrogen atom here, and a hydrogen atom here. When I do that, the bond from the oxygen to the hydrogen atom has an angle of 109 degrees, and the lone pairs are then also 109 degrees away from each other. And this angle between the hydrogen and the um, lone pair is 109 degrees, and this angle between this lone pair and this hydrogen is 109 degrees. And that's the best I can do to get those electron pairs as far away from each other as possible. 
Now we define something called the steric number. Notice that we had to get four electron pairs away from each other. And so the steric number for this molecule is four, and that's the number of electron pairs that we have to get away from each other. So the number of electron pairs that need to be arranged around the central atom. So any molecule that has a steric number of four is gonna arrange those four electron pairs at the corners of a tetrahedron. If we look now at the steric number for phosphorus pentafluoride, where we have the phosphorus atom in the middle and five fluorines arranged around it, what I need to consider is only the electrons that are arranged around that central atom. I don't care about the lone pairs that are on the outside atoms, only the electrons that are arranged around that central atom. And so I can see that there are five places where I need to put electrons around that central atom. And so the steric number here would be equal to five. It turns out that the best way to arrange five things around the central atom is in what's called a trigonal bipyramid that's shown here. So if we look at just the top of this shape, we can see that there is a pyramid up here that has a trigonal base. And then if we flip that pyramid over and stick it underneath on the bottom, there's another pyramid down here that's just upside down. So there's two trigonal pyramids, pyramids with triangular bases, two trigonal pyramids stacked on top of each other, and that is what we call a trigonal, because the base is a triangle, by, by for two, because there are two of them, pyramid. So whereas we had a tetrahedron over here, when we had a steric number of four, when we have a steric number of five, we have a trigonal bipyramid. Now, notice that if we think about the angles between these atoms, if we, if we imagine that um, this is the North Pole and this is the South Pole, then we have um, around the middle here, the equator. So these are equatorial positions because they're around the equator of this shape. So these bonds, the, those um, pairs of electrons are all arranged in a triangle so they're 120 degrees away from each other. And if we look at the electrons that are connecting this atom to the central atom, then, and, and any one of these equatorial bonds, we can see that this angle is 90 degrees. And so each of the pole atoms has um, bonds that are 90 degrees from the equatorial atoms, and the equatorial atoms are 120 degrees from each other. So we have two different bond angles in this shape. So how are we gonna count steric numbers for this molecule that has two central atoms? When I have a molecule that has more than one central atom like this, I'm going to talk about the shape around each central atom. So I'm gonna look at this carbon and I'm gonna ask myself, how many places do I have that I need to arrange electrons? And I can see that there's a pair of electrons here and a pair of electrons here and two pairs of electrons here, but those two pairs of electrons are, are together in that double bond. So I only have one, two, three places where I need to arrange electrons around this carbon atom. So to put um, electrons as far away as possible when I have an arrangement where I have three pairs of electrons to um, arrange around the central atom, I'm going to want to make a triangle. So if I put my carbon atom here and I um, just put those electron pairs out here at the corners of a triangle that's all within the plane of the board, this angle will be 120 degrees, this angle will be 120 degrees, and this angle will be 120 degrees, and I will have gotten those electron pairs as far away as from each other as I possibly can. 
When I look at this other central atom, I can see that it's just the mirror image of this one. And so it also has its electron pairs arranged in terms of a um, triangle. So this one, right, has its electron pairs arranged as a triangle as well. And so if I can put them all in the plane of the board, then this molecule is planar because everything is in the same plane. So in this case, I would say that this carbon has a steric number of three and that this carbon also has a steric number of three. And so the shape around each of those carbon atoms is triangular. We've now looked at an example of a steric number of three, which forms a triangle in the same plane, so we call that trigonal planar. A steric number of four, which forms a tetrahedral arrangement with the central atom in the middle of that tetrahedron. And a trigonal bipyramid, which forms that trigonal bipyramid structure with the central atom in the center of that tri trigonal bipyramid. There are two other possible electron arrangements um, with different steric numbers. So we could have a steric number of two, and the best way to get all of the um, electron pairs away from each other is to do that in such a way that the angle between those electron pairs is 180 degrees, or they form a line, and so we call this a linear shape. We can also have a steric number of six, and if we have a steric number of six, then um, our electron pairs are gonna form an octahedral shape. The central atom is in the middle, and then we have bonds to that central atom such that we have um, atoms at the top and the bottom, and then four atoms arranged around what we might call the equator of that shape. This is an octahedral shape because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight triangles, triangular faces on this shape. Octa means eight, and so we have octa for eight, hedral for shape, a shape with eight sides, octahedron.